Hey everyone, back for a new video and this time around we're talking about AI and is it evil or is it not? Is it going to take our jobs? Okay, so that's that's a little bit of a red herring because I'm not going to talk about if it's going to take our jobs or not. I feel like I would be quite half a year or a year late to that conversation and I had several of these types of conversations with people on my Discord and, and, and friends as well. And yeah, just, just so I reiterate my position, I don't think uh, like mid-journey stuff is ethical. It was pretty mind-blowing when I first saw it, but then very quickly I stopped using it just because I started recognizing the style here or there and I just didn't want to use famous people's names as prompts because yeah, I felt like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing their style. It's, it's just not fair. But... And I've been fighting for uh, AI, woo, AI rights, AI rights, okay, sorry about that. But I think there is a legitimate use case for AI, and I think there's definitely several use cases, but maybe not as much artists as industrial designers, uh, where you can use AI to actually speed up your work, to make your work uh, faster, which is the same thing, but also to take away the tedious parts. For me personally, that is rendering. And you've been, if you follow my Instagram, you probably saw several uh, drawings of robots and spaceships and cars and vehicles where I let AI do the rendering. Uh, many times also I just use AI rendering as a base layer and I am going to do paint overs and also a little bit of photo bashing on top of that because I have sort of an image in my head and Viscom, which is the AI that I use most of the time, this is not sponsored by Viscom, I just like using it, uh, does a pretty good uh, approximation of shadows and lighting and reflections and all that good stuff because it is trained on automotive sketches or at least automotive pictures, I'm not sure. But as far as I know, it is ethical, nicely trained. It's one of the very good ways of using AIs. So good indeed that even uh, Scott Robertson, if you're an industrial designer, you know he is, he started uh, working with them. Well, well, he works at least with them. He helps them out uh, in a uh, consultant sort of position. Anyways, so I thought for this video, because I want to showcase how you can use AI, uh, especially as an industrial designer, in a useful way, I am going to do a couple of chair sketches. And then what we are going to do is I am going to uh, render one of the chair sketches out as I would do it, like also nice lines and then renderings. And after that, we are going to take that line drawing, throw it into uh, Visca and see how much faster it does. But even more, I am going to take just the rough sketches that I used and that you can see right here uh, for ideation. And I'm going to use those just to see how quickly we can go from a rough, rough sketch into like, oh, actually, how would this sketch look in reality? So I want to see if I can just take any of those sketches, throw it into the Viscom AI, and if it can give me an acceptable representation of what a real-time chair or armchair in this case would look like. So, but before we do that, you in the background, you could see the sketching process of all the different chairs that I've been ideating on and also the rendering process. And I put a little timer there and of course I am cutting up the video so you're not seeing the, the, the real uh, real speed, but you can see on the time there that it took me around 14 minutes to do uh, the line work and 25 minutes to do the rendering. Now, I am not going to dismiss those 14 minutes, even though they could be counted as, um, well, a bit of a waste of time or tedious by some people, uh, but obviously the AI Viscom is going to give me better results on a crisp line work than just the rough sketches. So I just wanted to see what the difference is. So rough sketches took me about 20 minutes, 25, all of them. And the line sketch took me 15 and then 25 again for the final render. 
So yeah, keeping that in mind. All right, so here are all my chair sketches. One, one, two, three, four chair sketches. I did the fifth one, let's see. I just wanted to see if I can challenge Wiscom. And then this is the lines of the rendering that you've just seen. Okay, so we are going to switch to Viscom now. I prepared a nice rectangular little thing here so we can plop our drawings in. Now I am just going to go into chair sketches and select our first chair. Now remember this was, I don't know, five minutes out of those 20, this, this one chair. And I'm going to say mid century modern blue fabric armchair with light colored wooden veneer. I hope my writing is correct. Drawing influence always 100% because I wanted to take my drawing. I don't care about it making up its own stuff and then generate. And the sponsor this week is Steve the Pigeon. Ooh, Check out ooh, the, the ooh, merch store ooh, below. Ooh. I was doing background sounds for Steve. <laughs> Because that's for the pigeon. You don't want me to do background. Okay, okay? check out the <laughs> This is I'll leave all of this in. <laughs> check out the link. And there we go. Obviously, there's some artifacting that I am not a fan of, so I'm going to generate again. Getting better, but the I feel it's not picking up the wood, which I tested it before. It picked it up perfectly. Uh, mixed century modern. Let's take away light blue fabric. Fabric armchair with wooden. Oh, here we go. With wooden veneer over the arm rest. There we go. I think this was missing. Okay, let's just try with wooden arm rest. This uh, it's not not doing what we want. So let's take away wooden armchair with blue fabric. There we go, this this is already, so I'm gonna just confirm this even though I want there to be blue. So I'm gonna give a confirm to this one. And the wife so, just said this should be upholstery. So I am doing that. Ah, there we go, okay. Uh, I'll do a confirm on this one at the same time with light. Wood. Let me see if we can. And blue, gray, and also light blue, gray upholstery. Let's see if we can work with that a little bit. That it is. This is a bit getting more into the direction that we need. So I could give it a confirm. Ah, the only trouble that I didn't realize that I was iterating on the same thing instead of iterating on the line sketch. So let's iterate on the line sketch instead. And this is exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna confirm and just do one more. For some reason, it splits this up into two and I do not want that to happen. Let me just delete these two. I'm not a fan of those. And then let's go back here and just generate another version. Just, just to see what we can do. Whoa, hey, uh, there we go. AI doing its thing. <laughs> I mean, it's worth a try. We got, <laughs> I confirmed it for some reason. I don't know why. I didn't want to confirm it. <laughs> I wanted to generate one more. Okay, this is the last one. But you can see it, it already gives me a couple of interesting uh, results <laughs> with just a couple of button presses. So really this is, this is the speed difference. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna confirm this one. Uh, obviously not what I want, but I just wanted to try something out. So we have this dark dark color here. I'm going to color pick this, let's say this interior blue, and I'm just gonna fill this area here with, with a little bit of blue. So it's just like with Photoshop, you can use the bracket keys to make your brush a little bit bigger. And I just filled this area out there and I'm going to color pick here and also just do a little bit of corrections here and there where I don't want that to be. And now I go over to uh, this comes as this, but to refine. I push it up to let's say 85% because I still wanted to use as much as this drawing as possible. I'm gonna do another generate. 
Uh, we can do a confirm for this one. So this is this is one dark version. Uh, not what I necessarily want. I feel like this one works a lot better. So what I could try here is I'm going to just try and take away this thing here. Not the biggest fan of that. Not the nicest way to take it away, but there we go. Let's see if this works. Now we go again to refine 85%. Let's see what it does. Interesting, it doesn't work that well with, with the overpaint. Honestly, I have not tried the overpaint before, but it is a relatively realistic version. Okay, now let me do the same thing with the other sketches as well. So I'm just going to turn off all my layers and now I'm going to add Actually, let's do the same thing for before I move on to rest. So this is the clean lines. And I'm just going to use the same exact prompt, uh, back to render and generate it. Interesting, I was expecting the wood to pick up better, but you can see already the back, the back works quite, quite a bit better. So I am going to give a confirm to this one to see if we can play with the in painting, but let's generate again. I'm going to add wooden arm rest veneer just just to check and it is pretty much what I wanted uh, I'm gonna confirm generate a new one just because I want to see if I can get rid of this blue here and the wood around the thing because that is that is not really needed oh I generated on top of it well actually it was useful uh, would you look at that it did a pretty good job other than adding hero wood as well, but that actually works. So you can actually test yourself. I'm gonna confirm this. This is actually not bad. Uh, let us turn these two off and do one more try. Yeah, it is trying different things. I am going to go from blue gray to green gray. Ah, uh, isn't this nice? I'm just gonna confirm this and I'm gonna also run a quick refinement on this one for 85%. And it made it a little bit uh, bulkier, but but I can work with this. Let's confirm this. And this doesn't need the uh, wooden armrest veneer. Green, gray, armchair, upholstered, wooden legs, and I'll add mid-century modern. Let's see if that helps. Only legs are wooden. Let's see if this helps. How do you write cream? Creme? C R E M E? Or C R E E M? C R E M E? Cream? C R E A M? Also, I wrote Gary, not Gray. Okay, so I'm struggling a little bit with this one. So let's try if we can trick it. Let's see if I just paint away the parts that I disagree with, if it will play along. So I don't want any wood there. Thank you very much. Uh, the rest is good. So give me a refinement on this one. So I'm just going to go with this as it is because it is struggling a little bit with the lines. I can see that. Just to, just to move on to the next one. And the next one shall be this one. And this one is going to be wooden armchair with cream gray upholstery. This is already better. What I'm going to do is take, take some of this wood and add it here in the back. And let's see if we can sort of fix this like that. Okay, let's refine this. Well, there we go. I think this works quite well as well. Uh, you can, of course, further refine it, play more with it, but the idea for me is uh, to save time. So let's put everything into Photoshop. 
Okay, here we are in Photoshop with my rendered version with a little bit of texturing, as you can see, wood texture and also fabric texture. Cute, cute, isn't it? I like drawing these things. It's really fun. It only took me about 20 something minutes to render it like that, plus the 14 minutes for the fine lines. But if I would have just gone with the sketches itself, here we go, this is the sketch. Of course, we get a little bit more artistic, couple more, uh, sort of artifacts show up here and there, here and there, but it gives us sort of an impression what this might look like, what a wooden chair or at least a chair with sort of these wooden things over the armrest might look like. Now, of course, if we take the fine lines that I worked like, what was it, 15 more extra minutes on it, we go a little bit closer to what I actually had in mind, because if you compare this, to this, they are quite a bit closer than what we have here, because here it just went with like, oh, what do wooden legs look like? Something like this, which makes sense. But I was going for this particular uh, setup, even though I have rounded legs here and that seems have to not have conveyed here that well. But then we, in the same time, I also threw this in with some minor adjustments. It sort of gave me this and I see, I see the issue I see in the cars, these sort of sketch lines here that I use with cars, with uh, car renderings, it knows what to do with them. I see with furniture, it still has a bit of issues with them. And then here again, it did a pretty good job with putting down the legs and making upholstery look like upholstery. So, so yeah, the final takeaway is that in the end, rendering all of these in Viscom took me about 20 minutes, still a little bit less time than doing the, the rendering for my own little piece here. Now, it's up to you, of course, this is very fun and I see value in it, this, I like it very much. But within industrial design and also other design departments, concept art, whatever, you need to generate a lot of ideas quickly and you also want to see what it would look like either in reality or in a video game in a more realistically rendered form. So you can't just do a whole bunch of these small sketches in much shorter time and you can give these sort of impression and these impressions. And these will be not something that you sell to a client or anything, but these will be something that can give you a good direction in which you want to go with your design and then further develop it, you do your own renderings, combine these, overpaint them, Concepting these things is its own thing and it takes its own time. So I don't want to go into that. I wanted to show you uh, how to use design in a way that is going to improve, uh, speed up and make your life uh, maybe more pleasurable if you are, especially like me, more into the sketching phase and more into the developing ideas with just line sketches. Yeah, and with that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something from it. Leave the comments down below how much you disagree with me or how much you agree with me. I would love to read both of them. If you really liked what you saw here and would like to support me, don't forget there's merch link down there now, but there's also Patreon and whatnot. Uh, speaking of Patreon, I wanted to thank you very much to my lovely patrons. Their support means a lot to me. And with that, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time, keep on sketching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.